Hello and welcome to Caravan Salon. There's 17 halls full of motorhomes, campervans and caravans here. And uh, here in this hall, this is where we have uh, Weinsberg. Uh, it's a, a company belonging to Knaus. And this is one of their new ve vehicles here. I shall tell you uh, what it costs, 87,300, Caroloft. It's a Caroloft Ford 650 Meg. It is on a um, Ford Transit, it's seven meters long. And it looks like this. Got a German layout in the back. We've got storage below. And uh, we've got storage at the back. A little bit, well, we've got, they put nets in the storage on two of these three cubby holes. Uh, over there, I suppose, in that one, you could keep your mobile phone at night because it does have a USB and a 230 volt. Uh, here, we've got a Dometic fridge. And here, we've got two burners and a sink. Now, the people say to me that two burners isn't enough. Um, many vans don't have the uh, possibility of using three burners even when there's three burners because they're so close together. Although in recent years, that has actually stopped. So the, the, the space screen burners is getting larger. Now, sink over the toilet. You might think, well, that's not a very good idea, is it? Yeah, yeah, probably not. But anyway, so if I pull this thing here up, which you might be able to see, pull that up and move the thing across like that. That's as far as it will go. Then I've got access to the toilet, so I can open up the seat. I can open up this. Oh, oh dear. Now, this, this how it does move around. Ooh, this will move around. Can I open it up? And then, no, I can't you see it. So, it's all right if you're going to sit down to use the toilet. As incidentally, I saw some statistics on this, and it seems that many males actually do this in, in German. I think there was many males doing it in Germany anyway. Can't remember the country it was now. But anyway, uh, actually, there is some sense in actually sitting down. I can tell you to do it in the coach, for example, if you're a male. Uh, well, I'll leave that though for a, whenever I do a subject on how to urinate. For those who don't know, storage below. It doesn't have a flat floor. Don't like that. I like a flat floor. Now, uh, it does say that you've got, you can have option of Aldi warm water heating, I'd say, it's pretty, probably cost a fortune. There's space there for a television, which is optional. Uh, I mean, when I say optional, it means it's more money. Uh, so, Trum iNet X ready, and uh, here, that's a space for your uh, Aldi heating panel. Uh, it also says down here that you can have a lithium battery uh, as an option. and. Uh, you don't have to get it from Weinsberg, but I, I, I really suggest anybody who's going to be using it off grid ought to use a lithium battery. Now, note that there's a number of vehicles here on the Ford basis. The advantage with the Ford is that it's a it's a really easy drive. I really I really like the Ford Transit. This is a integrated motorhome so you can see the front of it is not from the original equipment manufacturer but the thing is these things cost a lot more money this thing for example with the German layout at the back this one cost 97,000 euros uh, so over cab model so in the over cab above yeah, you can just place it naturally sleep up there um, they used to get really stuffy, but I, th I think the modern ones, it's not, so, it's not so bad. The advantage with the overcab, though, is that it creates a lot of extra space. Now, here they're trying to put four people in here. In some uh, models, this will, this, you can lift this up, and this, will, and this is one of them, you can lift this up. In others, I've noticed it doesn't necessarily work. They've even made a little space up there, so you can use the space above the drawers here for, uh, I don't know, yeah whatever you kick to bed with you, your beer or something, your mobile phone to charge. Uh, so that, I think that's a good si sign. Uh, large table, uh, we've got here uh, three burners and a sink. 
German bed layout at the moment. It's two, layer, two beds which can be joined. Fridge on the left and here inside you have a toilet and shower with an awful uh, shower curtain which will stick to you when you wash yourself. Uh, so I'd get rid of that in my opinion. At the back, we've got a uh, genius who's actually uh, set this up. They put some cups on that ledge. As soon as the thing moves, well, not, maybe not as soon as the thing moves off, as soon as you try driving down a motorway in Italy, those cups will fall on the bed. And as long as they don't fall on top of each other, because it's a bed, they won't break. But anyway, you could, of course, spend hours of entertainment trying to get the bits of glass and porcelain out your bed. So that sounds like something you can do on your holidays. The opportunity for storage here was lost by not putting uh, covers on, on these uh, at the top where the storage is. Window on that side, window on the other side, like the curtains. I also like the indirect lighting. Of course, you know, lots of things are just, it's a matter of opinion, what people like and what they want. So, so different things appeal to different people. Uh, so here we see a larger vehicle with the overcab. Now the overcab actually does burn more fuel. I need to point that one out. Uh, it's not very aerodynamic. Uh, here we've got a uh, motor and it's got this lump there. That lump is for a bed which is in the roof and will drop down usually electronically. Uh, this one hasn't got a lump in the roof so that indicates that there isn't a bed or probably isn't a bed in in the roof it does not it doesn't always mean to say uh, if if there is no uh, no lump uh, that there's no bed this this is a smaller vehicle which has just been uh, introduced now you see here various base vehicles which you didn't see in years gone by so you've got ford we've got citroen we've got vw down here this excursion uh, vehicle is really really odd and there'll be a queue waiting to get in because it is odd but you can see it because I filmed it in, in different vi in videos and uh, so you've got the uh, VW bully at the front and they've built the motorhome onto the back you've got this pop-up bit at the top which goes up so it's it's a very low normally uh, just under just over two meters in height uh, but then it goes up to the length it is now so that's what that'll be about oh that'll be over three meters i think or something like that but anyway there's plenty of standing height inside the, the, however you know it's a tent and uh so it's okay you're going to use it in summer but nothing else that tent is no thicker than the uh, polar the fleece i'm wearing right now and uh uh, obviously you could heat it but um, so it saves space so yeah I agree but if you've got an underground garage or something you want to have a motorhome yeah that make it really does make sense you wouldn't be able to park that thing over there in an underground garage for example it depends on why the underground garage was but most of them you wouldn't be able to park there in so from, from that point of view I can see the logic uh, also it's got a 10 year water ingress guarantee that's a 10 year guarantee that water won't ingress but I don't know if that includes the tent or not so uh, I can see that you know it gets damp in the morning it might, might even be raining it has been known to rain and you can imagine that getting wet and you have to put the thing down then what happens does it get mouldy does it don't know I'm just pointing these things out the potential problems of something of this nature but, is, but I do congratulate those for thinking outside of the box and actually producing something along these lines. You'll have a walk further down. Um, I, I do like to say, if you want to see something in more detail, I'll film it, of course, by the time I uh, get anywhere. Uh, then um, by the time this goes up, I'll have left. Here we'll go on this one. Cara Compact 600 Meg. Uh, so it's got the German layout at the back. You've got storage here. You can see under under the bed. You can do with the light in there, which one would expect it. The vehicle. It's going. It's costing around 85,000 euros. And uh, same sort of storage here. Got the fridge. I'll open the fridge up for you if I can. Thetford fridge. Good brand. And here, we've got the toilet. And this one has a. It has this sink thing here again, and but this time it doesn't have it doesn't come with a curtain, it comes with a, 
a plastic thing here uh, which uh, won't stick to your body when you get wet unless you sort of uh, heat it up to about whatever plastic melts at. Got three burners here, uh, sink, drawers below and aluminium handles oh that's quite nice actually that's quite large this one comes with Truma sorry a Dometic sorry a Dometic uh, aircon unit there's your t optional television in place and you can sit down here and watch the television turn that chair around as well see this is on a Fiat this is the new Fiat well Fiat 8 and it was, I don't even know if it's new anymore. <laughs> uh, well, it's not, it's two years old. Uh, there's now a Fiat 9. Uh, um, right, here's a good thing. Here. See, this carrot compact is only 220 centimeters wide. And this is another thing I think people need to consider. Uh, it's, not, it's not the length which is difficult, but it's the weight, not the weight, the width, uh, which needs to be considered when one... Uh, drives a, a motorhome so we'll go in here this thing here is going to cost 75,000 euros and is uh, 675 centimeters in length German layout uh, to me doesn't look narrow from that point of view it's not it's all optical of course in the way it's very much uh, in your mind uh, Carter go around what 2020 I think it was or 2021 introduced a system whereby the front uh, it was this angled it at the front so you didn't make you think you had a wide vehicle uh, at the back I thought that was a really clever idea so uh, there you go you can see that you know most motorhomes are really sort of modular, if you like, because they've got bits, some bits are all the same as another's, but they sort of mix them around a bit. So it's like one, two, three, next one got two, one, three, next one's got uh, three, 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 or whatever. <laughs> Do you understand my idea? Right, here's a Weinsberg edition. We'll have a look at this thing here as well. Um, it's got a wide door. It costs 92,500, and it is seven meters long. Wide door, but it doesn't have a window in the door. In fact, it's a rather boring door. You think a door is another opportunity to have a window so you can see what's going on. Or indeed, it's an opportunity to store things like little bags or something like that. Uh, internal width, 212 centimeters. Doesn't feel narrow to me. And... Once more, we've got here, we can see two singles, but they can be joined together. And uh, you, you join them using this unit here. Uh, that'll fit in there. Actually, at the moment, because of the way the, 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 out, the sheets have been placed on top of it, sort of, it's confusing. And there's a, a piece that comes down here. Can you see that? And there's the piece that comes down there. And that will go on top of that. I'm gonna push this back so nobody else comes in. In the meantime, breaks. I usually tidy up the van after I've been in, but when there's other people in the halls, I can't really uh, do that. Uh, here, you can see how the plastic actually this works, and there's the one on this side as well. There you go. So that that stops the the water going everywhere. Um, it, might, it looks a bit flimsy, but I think it's better than a shower curtain. I first, I just uh, show them, I leave everything open, but then again, I don't make a mess. Uh. Um. This one's on a Mercedes Cara Compact 640 Meg. It costs more than a non Mercedes model, but other than that, they're all the same inside. This thing here comes at a cost of 92,000 euros. So, for the extra bit of cash, personally, I'd like to go for a Mercedes. That's if you like Mercedes. If you don't like Mercedes, then you wouldn't. But you see, exactly the same, or more or less exactly the same. Uh, step there, don't like a step there particularly not in a Mercedes-based motorhome, should have made a better effort. You see, just to, just to demonstrate that it's exactly the same in here.
There's a nice garage. Okay, so there you have it. Um, that is uh, Weinsberg at uh, Weinsberg Motorhomes. They do camper vans as well, but I haven't shown you the camper vans. Uh, trying to keep the video down to a manageable length. I uh, hope you found that of interest. And thanks so much for being here with me today. It's been uh, nice to actually walk around. I hope you've uh, learned something or whatever. I don't recommend Weinsberg as a company. I don't recommend any, any company that can house uh, well, except for Morello as a Knauss company, I suppose. But I don't recommend Knauss as a brand at all. Uh, all, all sorts of problems and the, the company just does not react. And now I think every motorhome you buy will have problems. Every single one. No one has taken a motorhome out of a dealer without having problems. It's how the problems then get resolved. These things are made by hand, largely. It's not like uh, uh, in a... Uh, a factory which builds cars. I mean, it's it's all automated. This is hand work. So, and it's that which um, causes problems later. Uh, because, okay, people work differently. I mean, if I, if I build anything, it will fall to bits in no time at all. So that's why I don't work in a motorhome uh, production area. But the uh, the thing is this, is the attitude that uh, the company has it's a management um, and I've actually written even to the managing director and they just couldn't care less so if you get a company with a managing deck director doesn't care less you can be pretty certain that that attitude actually goes further down it's other than that there are also problems but anyway thanks for watching and all the best from me in Germany <laughs>